My job as a group managing director was to create the space for the team to be able to perform, to give them the tools. It's an act of servitude. You are not there to micromanage or tell people what to do. You've got to listen and take on board what they want. And I think a lot of people get that the wrong way around. They think you're lobbing it from on high, telling people what to do. Maybe in years gone by, that style might well have been applicable. But I think now, every day, I'm still grateful for the opportunity to serve. And that's how I see it, servitude. Back in 1990, when I joined the, the family company, my dad was the, the owner, managing director. I was really looking for a job that would allow me access to a van because I was playing drums in a thrash metal band. But I really enjoyed it. Working in the stores, working in the stock control, doing the delivery driving as well. When everybody's looking at you as the boss's son, there's an expectation that you're bestowed with some privilege, which you are. But uh, I think you have to work that little bit harder to prove yourself and demonstrate that you're not just some little entitled brat coming in to spoil everybody else's fun. My job is, as a director, as a group managing director today, I, I, my job is to create the space for the team to be able to perform, to give them the tools. It's an act of servitude. You are not there to micromanage or tell people what to do. You've got to listen and take on board what they want. And I think a lot of people get that the wrong way around. They think it's a, you know, the, from, you're lauding it from on high, telling people what to do. Maybe in years gone by, that style might well have been applicable. But I think now, every day, I'm still grateful for the opportunity to serve. And that's how I see it, servitude. It was a real baptism of fire. I, I didn't really know what a director did. I didn't get a training course. Nobody gives you a manual. It's just the day you go, poof, into the deep end. I really had to buckle, uh, knuckle down and, and buck myself up in terms of just starting to learn. I went back and I did degree, uh, HNCs in, in accounts and bookkeeping. Um, and business management. At that time, the company, we, we, we quite an old fashioned approach to, to life. And the advice that my dad was receiving was very much, if you make the money, spend the money. I could see a balance sheet. All we needed was one bad debt, one big contract loss, and you could see the company was at risk. So we had these conflicting approaches and that, that was leading to strife within the business. And by that time, I was beginning to hatch the idea that I would buy the company out from them. Um, which again is a little bit unusual. When I tell that story, people say, well, you know what, I can't believe your, your mum or dad wouldn't just give you the company. Like, why the hell should they? They wouldn't do that with anybody else. When it comes to business, I think you do have to make that distinction while they're family members and their blood. When it comes to a business transaction, it's really clean. There's also the small matter of mum and dad and my sister had a number in mind that they would like to achieve. We'd shake my hands on a deal. Somebody came in and trumped that offer. I wasn't happy and I did say to the family that I felt there were terms within the proposed counter offer were not as good as mine. Um, so although the number looked lower to begin with, I didn't think there was much between them. The whole thing got drawn out way beyond where it needed to, in my opinion. I got to an impasse. I, I, I effectively was resigning. A guy called Jeff Meek at French Duncan gave me some great advice and, you know, he was basically saying, look, you're, you're about to cut your nose off despite your face here. I think there's a compromise. And um, what he proposed I thought was excellent and it, and it got us over the line. And what, what he proposed was the effect was, look, that big hairy headline number that your dad's wowed by, by this alternative offer, the company will be worth that, just not today. The funds you can raise are down here, the counter offers up there. Why don't we put it in place that you give them what you can meet right now with the heads of terms and put in an IOU through these class of shares to bridge the gap. And that's what we did. There's, there's no parts of it that are unclear. There's nothing that's fuzzy about the deal. However hard it was, and however much I disagreed with mum and dad probably at that time, actually the, the sensible thing was to do it that way. So I think being clear with families what the expectations are. Imagine, if you will, a father who's been bought out but not had any money. And the first year comes in and says, listen, you know, I've worked all my days. Can you see me right? I just want a wee dividend just to get me to Tenerife for a fortnight. No problem. And you pay that dividend. The second year they come in, the company's done a bit better this year, son. Yes, it has. Well, look, rather than going to Tenerife, I'd like to do a round the world cruise this year, son. Well, obviously I'll make sure that happens. I'll pay the dividend, I'll get you around. So where does that end? At what point does it become, is there any chance I can replace my Ferrari this year, son? 
and you're continuously and perpetually held over on this situation where they're neither in nor out the business and you neither own outright the business or in full control of what you need to do with that business. And I think that's a valuable lesson for any family, whether it's father, sons, daughters, uncles, brothers, whatever. Having a clear exit strategy with your family members, a clear succession plan, that's the other, the other piece of advice is, I had a very clear exit plan when I came in. So it wasn't just a question of, I want to buy a company because it satisfies this, this particular argument. It settles the argument about who's in control. There's no point in buying into the business unless you know what you want to do with it as well. So don't buy it for the wrong motivations. Don't buy it for the wrong reasons. I'll, if I buy this company, that settles the argument. Yeah, so what? What are you going to do with it? And that comes back to that point Jeff Meek made, which is, why are you cutting your nose off to spite your face? Do you want this or not? Because this is actually how we're going to get this thing over the line, if you want it. If not, off you go.